Hello. I've been to uh, many Abrahams, and I typically don't have a question. When I first started coming to Abraham, it didn't make sense. I was forced to come here. <laughs> really. And one of my biggest things when I was a kid, I was called Smiley. And I was really, really happy. Things always just worked out. And then in my 20s, uh, teenage and 20s, I tried to figure out why that was. And, I, you know, when I was a kid, I, I think I understood the purpose of life was to have fun. And as I started digging more into metaphysics and reading, and it became more about sort of uh, trying to manifest success. And maybe it's more about accomplishments. We just want to jump in really briefly with one word. From our perspective, the utter definition of success is joy joy in this moment so satisfaction is the success that you're looking for and every other kind of success will follow that the success of alignment with who you are then connects you with the success of everything that you've asked for too but if you're looking for anything other than that then you get off track pretty easy yes Joseph Campbell said follow your bliss right on track that's exactly right on track okay that does that that changes the perspective too yeah I, I get that I've had some contrast through relationships and business and that kind of stuff and good um, I yeah. it's the stuff eternity is made of say that again contrast is the stuff that eternity is made of without contrast there cannot be clear choices and without clear choices there cannot be new creation so contrast isn't you doing something wrong contrast is life serving you serving your evolution and once you're really good at focusing quickly then contrast doesn't bother you at all you just see it as opportunity to choose because contrast doesn't defeat you when you're in the driver's seat of choosing so uh, maybe as a key is uh, are we to find joy in the contrast well this is the way we explain this the answer is yes but here's how we explain it Step one is life just produces contrast and causes you to ask. So without even maybe putting words to it, if someone's rude to you, you want them to be nicer. And if you don't have enough money, you want more money. It's that simple. Life causes you to ask, even if you don't put words to it. Once you've asked, your inner being is all over it. Your inner being who stands as the receiver of your evolution becomes the vibrational equivalent of each new asking so step one is you ask step two is it's answered but it's a vibrational version that humans don't want to admit is real at first step three is admitting it's real step three is accepting that it has been asked and answered and that it does exist and then finding a way to get into the receiving mode of what you're asking for because it's constantly being revealed to you but you've got to get in a receptive mode so that you can receive what's being revealed it's like the radio station can transmit the message or the music but if you don't have your tuner set you're not going to hear it so you've got to set your frequency to that frequency which means you can't be in doubt or fear and hear it so we teach meditation is the easiest way to get there when you quiet your mind you stop all thought when you stop all thought you stop resistant thought when you stop resistant thought your vibration rises and when your vibration rises you're in sync and so now you're in the receptive mode so step one is ask step two is answered step three is receive and step four is getting real good at that being so good at receiving mostly because you like to feel good and because you've practiced quieting your mind so you can go there easily so step four is just being real good at step three that seems silly to have a whole step that's about the step before it but the receiving mode it's not like a college degree where once you accomplish it it's yours forevermore hang the plaque on the wall I have received it's not like that because it either is or it isn't in the moment depending upon how satisfied you are depending on what you're doing with your thoughts so step four is maintaining some stability there and then step five is what you were just talking about step five is being back in a contrasting moment and hear this often because your inner being inspired you there because you want more expansion because if you want expansion that means you want answers and if you want answers you need questions if you want expansion you need solutions and if you want solutions you need problems would you agree 
and so when you're tuned in tapped in turned on then very often you are inspired right into the clarity of a problem because it asks a question that the solution is so satisfying when it comes it's not failure on your part it's nothing for you or anyone to be disappointed about it's the process and understanding the process and being at one with the process and then once Esther caught hold of that when something wonderful would happen in her life she'd say I did that and when something not wonderful would happen she would say I did that too because she understood that it's part of the clarifying process but it's certainly not anything to lose your happiness over if you've been even watching this forum or listening to this forum for a while isn't the most satisfying conversation doesn't it follow a big problem that somebody has projected or a big question our answers are only as good and as big as the question if you've got a tiny little question we got a tiny little answer <laughs> if you got a great big question we got a great big answer and your satisfaction factor is proportionate it really is hmm. okay I just I think I just got that the, you think you did too <laughs> yeah. it's this it's almost this back end step from five to one <laughs> like that that is the cycle the, the quicker you can move through that what happens is you find yourself then not feeling like you're moving through it it's not like getting over the problem it's like ooh, a juicy question which is going to bring juicy answers and you see one of the things that happens is you come here we talk with you you hear us with our certainty speaking about the laws of the universe and we tell stories of Esther's success or other success or you hear the stories of success from others but until you have personally had the experience where you have felt the discord of what you think is a problem and then felt the relief of alignment and then actually come out of a meditative state with a clear impulse that maybe doesn't even feel related to your problem it's just an impulse that feels good like go to 7-eleven and get a slurpee but the impulse is so strong and it feels so good that you do it and then the next impulse leads to something that is a huge huge path you meet someone or another idea comes or you buy a winning lottery ticket or something happens until you make the correlation between a quieted mind a raised vibration a receiving thought and the following through on it then you don't know what we're talking about it's just so many words but once you start deliberately allowing your vibration to rise and then receiving the thoughts that come from it and acknowledging the other day here's Esther's newest example of this so you know if you've been listening to us Abraham teaches easy meditation we don't encourage you making a big deal about anything in fact we say listen to the air conditioner and if you do and you can just isolate that sound your thoughts will stop your vibration will rise and you'll have a meaningful moment with us and some people get that and do it and some people think oh there's got to be more and don't even try but it's what we mean it's how Esther does it it's how Esther has always done it so the other day they were in Asheville North Carolina which is known to be a spiritual community and friends who Esther met there said let's go to the salt crystal cave and Esther thought oh, a cave so they went to a building and went to a room and Esther thought oh, it's not really a cave but okay and then she realized it was a meditation thing and she felt a little slight resistance to that because she doesn't believe that she needs all kinds of stuff to help her meditate she's tuned in but she was with people she loves and there were some strangers that she was meeting for the first time and so 10 of them went into this room and it was a room not very big and the salt crystals had been imported from somewhere Poland or somewhere and they were all over the walls so that all you could see around the walls were in some cases very thick and in some cases not so thick but big salt crystals and the ceiling had nets with smaller chunks of salt crystal that were hanging from the ceiling and the floor was deep with what looked like a coarse sand but it was sand of salt crystals and then there were some lawn chairs seated around and Esther sat herself in a chair and thought immediately oh this is satisfying 
the temperature was perfect and there was a water fountain dripping delightful sounds and the fragrance of eucalyptus was very soft in the room and music really quiet beautiful music and Esther sat back in her chair and thought I love this <laughs> and then she proceeded to focus upon the sound of water dripping because it was the most consistent sound in the room and in her chair was sitting a large piece of crystal and Esther picked it up because she didn't want to sit on it and felt a slight resistance because it seemed like something unnecessary Abraham doesn't talk about it but she found a way to hold it her hand just fit so nicely in it that she fell in love with it and then she just blissed out for 45 minutes and when it was time to go she wanted to take her rock with her and they allowed her to pay four dollars for it <laughs> so now ever since that day Esther has thought about that delicious experience many many times hundreds of times Esther has thought about that delicious experience now before that experience she was in San Antonio at Copenhagen furniture with her grandson buying a desk for his new bedroom and there was a man there who was helping them make the choices and Esther and Luke made Luke made really wonderful choice and the salesman complimented Luke to Esther in front of Luke and Esther really liked that this is really a wonderful young man he said and Esther knows that but she really likes that he knows that and she liked that Luke knew he knew that so Esther has another little love affair going on with a stranger and then she went back with Tracy a few days later and bought some bar stools and met somebody else who knew Esther and then she went back a few days later and bought some more bar stools and now this man is there and he says to Esther do you mind if I take your phone number and call you and Esther said no I don't mind so she gave him her number he said I have something I want to talk to you about so now Esther is in the office supply store and she gets a phone call from this man and he says Esther I want to build a crystal salt cave in San Antonio <laughs> and Esther said of course you do <laughs> nothing else makes sense there's no thought that's been more active in my mind over the last several days in other words when things like that happen to you you know how loved you are you know how well the universe is managing things for you you understand the continuity of things and so and so and so and so now Esther may not break ground she's got 40 acres and plenty of places for a salt crystal cave maybe really a real cave maybe even a cave that isn't in a building in other words there are all kinds of things that are coming to mind about it she's often running with more 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 pleasure for the sake of pleasure this is how it works you see you don't have to do the work the universe has got all the data the universe knows everything you want everything that everybody else wants and where everything that they want and who they are are in relationship to you and will wind you up with it you just got to know that and be having fun with your grandson buying a desk in the process <laughs> and Esther doesn't even believe in the necessity of a salt crystal cave for meditation she just liked it she might be the only one who ever goes in it <laughs>